You can make anything artsy when you have the right tools. Today, Joe Rotella makes a cute bird feeder from Fine China. Hey, Joe. Hey, Julie. So we go to thrift stores all the time, and we find plates for 39 cents, 59 cents, and I love them, but I don't know what to do with them. Well, I just let them collect dust at my house. No, no, no. We're going to learn today how to drill a hole in them and then either make a tiered stand or a bird feeder or even a clock. Cool. So how do we get started? So we start, I have a plate here. We have to find the center in order to mark where to drill. If you remember high school geometry, you can get all complicated with like finding an edge and drawing lines and stuff. I don't that, even know what this tool is. That yeah. just looks confusing so to me. So instead, we're going to use a template. And you can download this from the Make It Artsy website. So if you help me find the center here, you lining up some lines. I was gonna say, I can see the green ring on here. You could line it up with the black dashed line. And let's see, we're gonna do the black solid line right about there, I think. And use a permanent marker just to make a dot. So it has to be something I know you said that's waterproof, right? Because we're gonna drill this with water and we don't want it to wash away. The other thing I wanna do is just put an X on the back. That'll help when the drill bit breaks through to not break the other side. So we've got this done now. We're gonna use a wet drill approach. You could fill this whole dish with water. It's a lot of water. Instead, here's a trick to make a little swimming pool. So it's a mason jar lid, and then you're using the masking tape to just basically secure that down so that the water stays in that little swimming pool area. Yep. Now, and if the water gets out, it's no big deal because we're gonna drill on top of a tray. You know, I was thinking that that X trick reminds me of when there's a hurricane and you're supposed to do that on all your windows to keep the windows from breaking. I remember that from the East Coast. Okay, so this is all done. We're all marked. We're good to go. The next thing we need to do is decide on a bit. And I've seen two types of bits for drilling through china or glass. I call this one a spade. It's nice because that point is really sharp and it gets you a great starting point, but it's really hard to work with because you're basically chiseling out the whole area as opposed to this type of bit. This leaves a core. You're just drilling the outside edge. It's diamond tip. I was gonna say, I noticed it was kind of shiny. Kind of shiny, how's that? So I'm gonna use a bit like that. And we want something to support the base. So I just have a block of wood that fits nice here underneath. I'm drilling on top of a tray so that I can capture any water. If it does leak out, you know, no worries at all. So I've got safety gloves on, mm -hmm. if I can I was gonna say, you've got on. glasses on. I'm gonna put on my own safety glasses just to make sure <clears throat> nothing's flying around. I'm gonna fill our swimming pool. Oh wow, that really works, it all and stays in there. I'm using a hand rotary tool and I'm really comfortable. This is water and electric, never a good combination, but this is low voltage. So it's not, it's like using a little battery. Let's turn the tool on. So now, like lower voltage than a hair dryer? Absolutely, oh yeah. absolutely. If we just come straight down like this, this tip is gonna kind of ice skate all over the place. So the trick is to come in at an angle, let that edge kind of grab, and then tilt it up straight. So it's almost like you're creating a pilot hole, but without actually creating a hole. Absolutely, so I'm gonna start here. Can you hear it dig in? Yeah. Now we're gonna start to lift it up. Now we don't wanna press down very hard. Let the bit do the work. If you press down really hard, then you're likely to crack the bit. So that is the one thing about tools, which is knowing that they are doing the work for you and you don't have to struggle or push it or anything like yeah. that. You can just relax and wait it out. Because I assume we'll sort of hear when it gets through the plate and hits the wood. Absolutely. Now this may take me a second or so if you want to start to assemble our first oh, yeah. bird feeder. So I'm really excited about the bird feeder. I know I, I have a long rod with a washer and a nut. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cup and I'm going to place it on there through the hole. And then I'm going to take this plate and put it right on the bottom, securing it again with a large washer. And then again, my nut is going to go on there. And I just screw that on with my hand. Really, this is oops, super easy to do. I think I put it on backwards. Oops, I got the dropsies today. And I'm just going to go ahead, screw it on. And let's see if I can get it on there. So once that's secure on there, I'm gonna go around to the other side, right? 
And then I know I have this bigger plate, which actually counterintuitively is going upside down to create our bird feeder, not right side up. So washer and then upside down plate. And then I simply put the other washer and the bolt on, and I can hear that Did you're you hear drilling the difference? is done. Did you hear the difference in the sound? Yes. So now I'm gonna work on this three tier stand at the same time. I've got two tiered already assembled. So now you gave me a really good trick for finishing this off because my first question of course was, uh, Joe, I don't understand how this hangs. And you said to use a turnbuckle. Yeah, how cool is that? I mean, normally you put two things, one on either side, and you tighten that in the middle. <laughs> but in this case, we can just remove one end of it. Exactly it fits so. Our rod I was going to say, I just take out the sort of hook part of the turnbuckle right here, and then I'm simply going to screw it onto the rod. It'll give me an easy hook. Now, as for you, I notice you're putting, what is that? This is like a little felt washer. You never want to put metal against the plate, so this little washer sort of prevents that. I was gonna say, but with the bird feeder, I did put metal against the plate, well, but that's because it's not being used for food. Well, and to be honest, I just got all those parts at a hardware store, and I didn't try to cut you know, a felt piece for it. Look at this bird feeder. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. I'm ready to cut holes in all sorts of plates. I'm off to the vintage store.